Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be updating you on the courtroom drama out of Keene we discussed last week. We'll also be discussing an amnesty program at Purdue University, plus looking at a new law against offensive bumper stickers in Tennessee, and there is good news out there if you're a hamburger lover. More coming up here on Free Minds TV. Thank you for tuning in to Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. With you, as always, is Toby. And Nick. This is the 212th episode we have recorded, or season 6, episode 23. And we're going to have some good news and some bad news on the show. An update from last week, then getting into some good news for uh, drinkers at Purdue University, or at least people who may drink excessively and find themselves in some trouble. Um, also some great news for uh, people like myself who like big food items, uh, hamburgers in particular. It's the one piece of nationalism I have left. I don't feel patriotic when I, people wave the flag or, or anything like that. When the president rolls by, I, uh, stuff kind of almost turns my stomach. But one thing I still do have patriotism for, Nick, is when it comes to big ticket food items and keeping those world records in the state. We'll let you know how big the world's biggest hamburger um, turned out to be brought back to the states. Very nice to see. Uh, but first, I want us to start with an update from last week. Last week, we were talking about Adema Freeman, uh, who was in Keene District Court. There's all sorts of activism going on here in Keene, New Hampshire, a lot of civil, civil disobedience type, type activism. Adema Freeman was there um, doing some outreach uh, one day for, for something, and um, he ran into Judge Edward Burke, who's one of the judges at the district court here in Keene, and asked him a few questions. Now, last week we didn't have the video, but we did uh, talk about how he was thrown into jail, given $5,000 bail, and charged with a Class B felony, which could throw him into jail for years and give him thousands of dollars worth of fines. Now, he has now been released on bail. Uh, he has a probable cause hearing as when we're recording the show tomorrow, July 7th. Um, so. What, to get the updates on what happens, log on to our website and check out the forums for we'll have content that people can get the update. Uh, but we do have the video this week. So uh, last week we talked about how he supposedly had threatened uh, Judge Burke, uh, given him some improper influence, according to the criminal code here in New Hampshire, uh, by threatening him. Uh, before we talk about it, let's just take a look at the video and let you decide if he was threatening and improperly influencing. Judge Burke, can I ask you a few questions about a hat and how that constitutes contempt? You think people want to pay for someone to be in jail for five days for wearing a hat? It's kind of ridiculous to waste taxpayer money on something like that, isn't it? Sir, I just want to have a conversation. Bailiff, bailiff, this person is threatening me about a decision that I just made. I'm not threatening you. I have, I'm asking him questions. Did I threaten you? He's threatened as a, as a criminal offense. What was my threat? Come on, sir, you're in custody. What was my threat? You come in custody, yes, sir. Now, I'm no fancy dancy lawyer who can twist words and make what Edema was saying into some kind of type of a threat, but did I miss something there? I don't think I saw any threats. Now, the there is a section of the improper influence that could the uh, judge burke could be referring to but judge burke specifically said arrest this man for threatening me nowhere in that video and you can see him walking in from the outside that's where the conversation started did a demo threaten judge burke seems a little irrational on mr burke's part uh, but let's just go into this this criminal code and then we'll talk about it uh, section b says privately addresses to any public servant who has or will have an official discretion in a judicial or administrative proceeding any representation argument or other communication with the purpose of influencing that discretion on the basis of considerations other than those authorized by law what that is basically saying is you can't talk to a judge and um, privately ever if it has anything to do with any decision he may or may ever make so it's very it's very troubling what if for backstory for those who aren't familiar uh, there there's all the civil disobedience where sometimes people don't really follow the rules of the court one of them is if you don't wear, take off your hat sometimes they'll throw you in a cage for one day two days five days whatever the judge decides they want to throw you in jail for now as a taxpayer here in Keene, new hampshire i for one say i do not want to pay for anyone being in a cage who has not harmed someone else 
It's not worth my time. It's not my, worth my money. I pay thousands of dollars in property taxes, rent on my house that I supposedly own, to the city of Keene so that they can put people in contempt of court and throw them in a cage for wearing a hat. I don't care if people wear a hat in court. Yeah, it's a bit rude. I wouldn't do it. I, I like a little bit of decorum myself. But then again, Judge Burke is a little bit rude, saying people are threatening him when they're not. I don't want to pay this crap. And now you're telling me no one can question the judge about it? You can't even talk to the man? Where's the First Amendment? Freedom of speech, being able to question people. Freedom of the press. Can't talk to a judge. This is disgusting. Now, Nick, I know you have a little bit of a different take. We are talking about a little bit before the well, show. And in you this said, particular well, you need to have a court system. And If I say this is the court system, get rid of it. Well, I'm done with it. Yeah, this, this is see, the kind of thing. I'm a small system. government guy, Nick. But this kind of crap makes me say, get rid of yeah, all of it. I don't it need it. It gets a lot worse when you have a court system because then people start capping. Yeah, I don't need it. If this is what the court's doing, Nick, what, what the hell is the point? Wasting my money. That's what they're doing. You well, know how hard it is to pay money on property taxes? That's a big part of what they do, do. Yeah. Thousands of dollars. Twice a year. It's almost, uh, it's thousands of dollars twice a year. Yeah. And this is well, what it's being more used than for? More half of that goes to the schools. I, mean, but I don't care it. about, I'll pay for I, schools. I, I, I don't really care about that nearly as much. It's putting people in cages for right. this kind of crap. Well, Having robed men the decide people's the intention of, haven't hurt anyone. I mean, as I understand the intention of the law here, what they're doing is they're, uh, they don't want you know, a judge to receive 100 phone calls at home. You know, it says privately address a, a judge or somebody else, some other judicial official who, ha who has official review in a case that's outstanding. So they've had it or they will have it. So. And I don't think it, it's quite as general, Toby, as, I mean, I guess the law is rather vague, but I don't think it's quite as general as saying, addressing them about anything that could ever become a case. I think they mean a case that exists that might end up you know, in their courtroom. Oh, so, well, this case has already been tried and decided. The, the case right. of the hat? In this particular case, and I don't much care for Judge Burke saying he was threatened when he clearly wasn't. I'm just saying that... Don't much care. He should be disbarred for such a thing. That's it's just, it's rather dishonest. That's, I'm going to allege this because this Judge Burke man I'll leave. I'll leave, I'll leave I'm going to just about say alleged, but it looks like he allegedly was lying. I'll leave decisions about disbarring people to the Bar Association. Well, I'd recommend it. I don't know who decides <laughs> such things. The Bar Association decides such things. Other lawyers. Oh, other other liars. Oh, great. Well, well, <laughs> well that's um, wonderful. A bunch of paid liars using my tax dollars it's to very, throw it's peaceful very people hard, in cages. It's very hard to get this. It's by disgusting. Way. It upsets me, Nick, because well, I'm having your defense to pay for this. And what happens? Too. What happens, Nick, if I decide I don't want to pay for this crap? They takes my house. I I mean, it's very upsetting to me. I, I, I've, I've been going a little bit in the direction of, yeah, small government, let's keep it around. But it upsets me when I see this crap wasting my money. Let's not look at this from a liberties perspective. Let's look at this from a money perspective or a liberties perspective. Either way, it's sick. It's sick that anyone should have that much power in a public forum to throw someone in jail and threaten them with years, years, for addressing a judge and questioning them about a policy that's wasting my money. It's, it's scary to me, the fact that you can well, be thrown in jail for such a thing. It shows the power that these people think or do have, because he was arrested. Those bailiffs didn't have any idea what happened, but we're following orders. You know, if I went to someone and said, hey, the police, Nick's threatening me, and I had recorded the whole interaction, first thing they'd probably do is, let's see the video. Did he really threaten you? And in this case, it would have said, no, clearly not. And probably might have arrested you for falsely uh, reporting well, exactly. that I threatened you. If a normal person made that claim, that's true. He's not a normal person. He's above the law? Uh, well, no. He's not above the law. But, I mean, and, uh, in this case, I mean, the way they're applying the statute is ridiculous. I don't think there was really a criminal offense in this case. Well, and that's the other but, question. But is a public lobby where other people are around and it's being recorded for the public a Well, they're private, alone in the stairwell, so... But it's being recorded for private as a member of the press. That's is the that problem. How do you define the, what the intention of the... Do they well, mean... Private in the statute, do they mean privately, completely private, or do they mean individually address the judge outside of court channels? I you should be it's, able it's to a, tell a judge I mean, the statute as a vague taxpayer. Enough. As a taxpayer, I should be able to walk up to a judge and be like, "Hey, judge, you're throwing peaceful people in cages, and I'm sick of paying for it." I can't say that because I might hurt his little feelings. Is that the idea? Yeah. Well, I think the idea is is to avoid people threatening judges. He's not threatening him. Or applying a lot of pressure on judges. That's not a, a lot of pressure. That's just asking him a couple of questions, wanting to have a conversation. Right. 
Well, yeah, I would also agree that you shouldn't be able to just call a judge's house about an outstanding case. It's not how it works. Or what should happen to you if you call a judge's house about an outstanding case? I guess that's up to the judge. Up to the judge? I guess it's up to the judge. I think judge. it should be up to that's the taxpayer, Nick. Well, yeah, the, how are we going to decide that? We're going to get every taxpayer in town together and decide? Yeah, I don't know. That's the whole well, idea. Then, 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 I say, politics. And then I say, well, if you have the judge, then I say, well, that's, that's the state supposedly. And that's the kind of thing that pushes me away from government and says this whole system is crazy. You know, there are fundamental flaws in any system. And in this yeah, particular case, I think the way it's being applied is ridiculous. I'm just He's saying. painting a picture of why we don't, don't need government. You know, I, well, I, I think there is a need for a certain amount of independence for the judiciary. Hmm. And that goes for jurors, too. I mean, they, if you've ever been, if you are served on a jury pool, in a high profile enough case where there might be news about it, you know, the, the, the jury pool's sequestered, you're not, you know. Well, they should lock them up, but there should be no law out up there, Nick. Well, you if you don't want someone to talk to them, but so there should be better. no law saying me as a free person can't well, go there's up not. to, with I jury, can with go jury. up to the, whoever I want and ask them whatever I want, well, or the, tell them whatever I want. They jury, don't need to answer. Right. But I can go up to, I should be, as, as a free individual, someone who is supposedly free here, I should be able to go up to you or a jury member, or a judge, or a police officer, or anyone, and talk to them in the public space. Yeah, I agree, in the public space. Yeah, sure. and if they're in the public space, which this was a public space, you should be able to ask them whatever questions you okay. would like. They don't need to answer. And if, and if the judge can't hold his feelings back, and the judge can't not be influenced well, by in, that, in this, maybe it's time to retire. There was no crime in this case. I'm just saying that- Allegedly, the, Nick, the, the you don't want Judge Burke to come after you too. I, I don't. Well, you got to say allegedly. He might come after you. Well, based I, on my at this of the point, this man <laughs> seems like a crazy person. That's why I'm saying yeah. allegedly because no one would have thought he would have arrested anyone for that. That seems like yeah. Uh, looking the at the dealings of a madman. <laughs> looking at the way this statute is, uh, yeah, constructed, it's it's there to keep judges from being threatened or mm -hmm. bullied into making a decision on an outstanding case, and that. That has nothing, and I'm not even sure that you could call this a private address because Adema was, was videotaping. It was for public purposes. Right. It was, the video is going to be published from day one. So essentially, would the judge have done this if this was a reporter for the Keene Sentinel? He probably didn't like the way that the questions were asked, but there was clearly, you know, you actually saw the judge enter the courtroom. So it's pretty clear to me from the video that he, you know, there was no s initial address between the two that took place outside. The entire time they were interacting is recorded on the video camera. There weren't any threats there. And if a threat was made a day or two previously, based on the response to this, I think that had Judge Burke been threatened in the past, he probably would have cracked down. So I, 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 I think it's safe to say that he was not threatened. I think that's pretty self-evident to a reasonable person from the video. I now, if he wants to try to make a case that this was a private address, all I'm saying, Toby, is that the law is vague enough that it's not clear to me that Judge Burke is completely outside the bounds of the law. I just think it's a bad law. So question and I don't, like, I don't like the fact that the judge is applying it because he, he, he just didn't seem to appreciate the question. Because he's embarrassed. Now, because it really threatened the legit, Here's you know, the, question. The, the integrity so if this of the goes court to trial, system. If this does go to trial, Adamo gets to question Burke mm -hmm. on the stand. Does he go to jail for that too? Because he's going to question Burke. Uh, <laughs> Burke's not only is he also going to be forced I think to answer. The, the law yeah, Burke will have that. to answer Adamo's questions too. And then, do they arrest him for that afterwards? Yeah. After the fact, for questioning him, I guess. Well, that's they did, in the statute. It does say per, as permitted by law. So I guess oh, they right. specifically did exempt questioning a judge in a courtroom. I'm just because qu these laws they seem crazy to me. Okay, it's, it's not. Uh, it, it seems like something. It's a poorly written law. To my my poor feeble brain here just doesn't fathom it. I, maybe I'm just dumb. Maybe I, I just common sense has left my brain. Common sense to me dictates that this is crazy. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we have to talk about s uh, other stuff in other parts of the country because we're not just here in Keene, but this could happen anywhere. The reason this is happening in Keene, for folks who are a little bit confused, we're on all over the country as well as people watching us in other parts of the world. The reason this is happening in Keene and not in, say, California or Georgia is because there is liberty activists who have moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project who are challenging the system and they're showing the system's true colors. So this would apply to any other part of the country if other people challenged these robed men or their systems or anything else and challenged their common sense. And um, so as part of the Free State Project, there's 
hundreds of activists who have moved here and are doing just that. So if people are wondering why we're talking about Keene, well, this would happen anywhere, just we happen to be in this hub where a lot's going on. So we'll continue to update you on that. Like I said, ch uh, check, in, uh, check our forum with the link with the updates because uh, we'll see if this does go to trial. Uh, there's a probable cause hearing um, the day before the, uh, this goes premieres and goes live um, all over the place. So. Check our forums, freemindstv.com. All right, Nick, moving right along. Other insanity. I think this might be from Tennessee. I could be wrong, but apparently there's a law saying that you can't offend people with your stickers or you'll you'll be slapped with a fine. Yeah, I guess the law is um, specifically addressing, uh, how do they phrase it, obscene or patently offensive bumper stickers, window signs, or other markings on their vehicle visible to other drivers, and they'll face a $50 fine. Now, the people, the proponents of this law are saying it's for, you know, the children? Pornogra well, yes, and pornographic pictures and whatnot, things that... How, okay, am I missing something, Nick? Are there a lot of pornographic bumper stickers out there? I've never seen one. I've seen like the Calvin. I think this has to do with the rubber, on, like a Ford sign or something. But I've never. Yeah. Well, I, and this is I another problem. This is another like the mud flaps. Well, they calling that pornographic. Well, you, know, you, you know the plastic testicles that people hang off their trucks. Yeah, it's a little tacky. It's pretty gross, but I mean, yeah. Well, so is uh, I mean. So are most of the people who put. Chuck nuts on the truck. I don't really think you should be finding those people. No, right? yeah, I think I, I think, think they're punishing much. themselves. Actually, in all honesty, I think you're putting yourself in the socioeconomic category. I all want them own. to advertise what kind of people they are, so I can stay away from them. I would love the people who have these patently offensive bumper stickers like that, whatever you're calling them. Yeah, I like. When I've been driving for a long time, but can... I've never seen a a lurid graphic. Bumper no, but if I did see one, I'd be like, okay, that person's a creep. I'm going to keep my kids. Don't go near that truck because the driver's a creep. They're yeah. advertising themselves as a creeps. Yeah. I'd say you want well, them to and do the, that. The other thing is, how is this law going to be applied? That's the problem, especially with things like obscenity laws. Is at, I mean, we were just talking about a, a law that here in New Hampshire that may have had good intentions and is so broad that it can be, you know, it's being applied in ways that you know, may not have been the original intention, but it's so broad that you can kind of make an argument I'm for it. I'm patently offended patently, by, I'm patently patently offended offensive. by a uh, Obama bumper sticker. Right. That's I'm, patently offensive to I me. I mean, who's going to determine who's, what's patently offensive? And I guess the article says people call in and report them, and then they can go arrest them. And you get the fine from the police officer, and then you would have to go to a judge to appeal it. I guess it's uh, this yeah. is the issue. This is what uh, the, what's happening here in America. Maybe, maybe people, a lot, are there a lot of obscene bumper stickers in Tennessee? Maybe this is a Tennessee problem. Well, do they, what do they call obscene? It's such so broad. I, I think this is the issue, Nick. People think they have the right not to be offended, and that's an issue. You don't have the right not to be offended. You have the right to free speech in a public place, but you do not have the right not to be offended. That's not a right. If you don't want to read a bumper sticker, don't read it. Well, that's kind of... That's, What's that's, wrong with that? <laughs> you kind of, like, I don't know if you can really not read it. Sure you can. It's not like a TV station where you just, know I don't put it on channel 58. Oh, give me a break. Your, your, eyeballs, are, you, your eyeballs are out there. You're you can't drive down the road and be like, I'm not going to read bumper stickers. Maybe my brain I guess it, I guess if you made a, a, a commitment to never read another bumper sticker again. Oh, but... But no, I don't. I think you'd still read them. I... Don't really I think you'd just be offended. I think you'd have to. You'd probably, have to? You most likely would have to read it. Oh, I don't think you have if to. It's appearing in, if, if a text is appearing in your field of vision, human beings just typically read it if they're oh, literate. I guess I'm not a human being or a literate. literate. One or the other. You don't just read bumper stickers automatically without knowing what they say. Well, if I'm in a bumper sticker reading mood. But if I'm not, I won't read them. I see bumper stickers all the time. I don't Try not read reading them. the bumper stickers for a week. I don't Try read them all the time. Try explicitly saying I'm not going to read my eyes are on the road. Bumper I am trying to drive and well, pay attention to the road, not still. someone's bumper. Why do I read their bumper sticker? Only well, if, if I'm the passenger. If you stopped at a stoplight, you don't read the bumper stickers on the car. That's time me. to play with the radio. I d you know, in all honesty, Nick, I am a yeah. safe driver and I like to I'm agreeing with you about not having the right not to be offended. I don't need to read the bumper stickers. I'm opposing this law, but you can't. Don't read the bumper sticker. Why? Why do you have to read the bumper sticker, Nick? I think... You have an obsession. Stop. Why do you have Sick. To, why do you have to notice the color of the car in front of you? You just do. Maybe I I'm think, oblivious, I mean, Nick. Am I wrong? I'm oblivious. I think you I just must. automatically... People will read the obscene bumper stickers, and we'll they'll be offended. It. We'll stop. No, there's no... You're just going to be offended. Well, or That's just call the police. Answer. More if call the police. If you don't have a right not to be offended, you will be. Some people will be offended by bumper stickers which are not obscene or patently offensive. Yeah. There are political bumper stickers out there that... Yeah, you know what I think they should do? They should cry yeah, me yeah, a yeah. river and then go drown in it. All right. 
Moving right along, Nick. That's it's sick. It's I think disgusting, you're missing blah, 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 blah. what I'm saying. I was kind of agreeing with you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just uh, don't think that you need to read the bumper sticker. I don't. No, think I think, it's think you necessary. do need to read the. I don't I read the bumper. You do need stickers. to read the bumper sticker. I think you're going to absorb the information on the bumper sticker. Mm. Maybe if you're paying attention to bumper stickers and not the road. Me, I pay what attention to the road. What I'm saying is that people should deal with it. Well, you have a safety issue, Nick. People you should, should drive. You should pay attention to the road. What I'm saying is that people should just suck it up. People are. The bumper stickers are there because people read them. Who cares? What They're you not talk. there for the person who drives the car. They know what the bumper sticker says. It's there for all the other people on the road because people just read bumper Zane, stickers. I'm a creep. I like thing. truck nuts. All right. Exactly. Let's move on, Nick. That's what I'm saying. Let's move on to good news. There's been enough bad news for one day. Let's go to something positive. Let's go to Purdue University, who is doing something good for those underage drinkers out there who decide to drink before they're 21. Really, scoff laws of the law. No one else has done that in the history of people besides the new generation, the new youngsters, all the people who passed these laws never had a sip of alcohol before they were 21, but still uh, like to arrest people. I read the court logs and man, the, most of the district court levels are underage alcohol. Once you lump in drug, minor drug possession. Minor drug like possession and, and, and of most of them are just drinking because it's an easy $400 collection for the, for the city here. And it's like that in many parts of the country. And Purdue University is saying, well, you know what? Underage drinkers, usually they are not taught how to drink because they're told no drinking until you're 21. So they go to college and they start binge drinking and a lot of them die from that. And Purdue is saying, let's think outside the box. Let's not just crack down and say zero tolerance. No, you get caught drinking, you're, you're going to be disciplined, you'll be fine, blah, 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 blah. They're saying, let's try something different. Let's try to keep people safe. And the university said that they are offering an amnesty program to underage drinkers who get sick or are hurt. Underage drinkers or their friends can call police without fear of being punished. Uh, now, the policy is only temporary. For now, the uni university senate will vote on this fall whether or not to keep the program. I think it's great because it's all about reducing risk. When you're talking about drinking, drugs in general, and alcohol is a very powerful drug out there. Let's not say drugs and alcohol. Let's just say drugs. Alcohol is one of those drugs. Very powerful drug out there. And it, if we don't want people to be hurt. We want responsible behavior, and we want to reduce the risk harm reduction programs, and I think that this is great. No, I don't think it's a smart idea to binge drink. But you know what I think is a really dumb idea? Making people who binge drink so afraid to call for help when they have a little bit too much that they risk the dying. Lots, hundreds of, I don't know the exact statistics, but I know it's over hundreds, maybe even thousands of people die every year from binge drinking. And other drug overdoses, why don't they lump in other drugs? That would be a smart decision. Oh, people, I'm other sure drugs. it's many, many thousands. If you count the kids who are out of college, all the alcoholics out there are drinking. But people are afraid. Death. They're afraid to go to jail for it. The, or afraid right. to get disciplined. Well, or if you're afraid to get if you're, fined. If you're a college kid, and Purdue is a fairly prestigious school, you know, a lot of these kids are there on scholarships, things like that. You know, what they're dealing with here in this amnesty is specifically, you know, if you need to call the police or take somebody to the hospital. So you've got, the, you know, if somebody has had too much to drink and you're worried about them dying from alcohol poisoning, do you really want kids to say, eh, he might lose a scholarship? Let's just wait and see. If, if college kids are considering taking somebody to the hospital because they drank too much alcohol, they probably drank way too much alcohol. What's so very and, 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 you know, calling the police, what if a 20-year-old gets beat up at the frat party? just gets the crap kicked out of them. Can't call the yeah. police. There was alcohol involved. Right. They might get in trouble. Which they might still not do, but I think Purdue probably has the, di you know, a lot of these larger schools have the arresting powers for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's up to the school, not the city, because they've got their own police Well, it should force. go across the board. And right. I don't so you should be able to call campus, the campus police. Yeah. They should be more interested in See, helping finding, you. Right, keeping people from beating each other up than what 20-year-old or 19-year-old might have had alcohol that night. Yeah. You know, what I, I say is that what's sad is that we're, we're celebrating this as good news because it's so rare. And the fact that it's only having to do with alcohol so and narrow. not other drugs, it, it's so narrow. Alcohol if you're in terrible it's, trouble. And the fact that this is only a temporary measure, it's very sad. It, it speaks wonders about society and how backwards we are. And uh, I think it's a little bit sick that we're allowing thousands of people to die because we're so prudish we don't want to admit that people in college will experiment and young people in general not just college will experiment with drugs and alcohol it, and that thousands of them die because they're afraid to call for help because they might get in trouble it's silly harm reduction folks let's be smart you're never going to win the war on drugs you're never going to win the war on drinking binge drinking and underage drinking be smart about it harm reduction all right moving along excellent news nick there's no ifs ands or buts about this one 
This is the only time that I get patriotic. I get nationalistic. That's it. During this, these times. And I like to bring these to the show because there's no bad news about this kind of thing. Anyone who says poo-poo on this story, well, you're no fan of me. This is big food ticket items. Everybody knows who watches this show, I know, at least a couple times, knows that I, I'm a... I'm a food connoisseur, especially like the really bad for you stuff, like hamburgers and stuff. You eat a lot of hamburgers. I do like hamburgers. Mountains and of them. Mountains of them, and I do like huge foods, and one of my goals is to create some food, big food and big hamburger. Uh, I know last time we reported on this, the big ticket hamburger had been taken away by another country, oh, Canada, 595 pounder, and it's now been brought back. Yes, uh, San Francisco, CBS is reporting that some very ambitious cooks made history at, at the Alameda County Fair on Saturday when they grilled the world's largest uh, commercially available hamburger. 777 pounds! That's a lot of hamburger meat. Yes, uh, the, the burger was 1,375,000 calories, which is enough to feed one person for a couple of years, uh, or myself for three or four months. Um, the trimmings include 110 pound buns, some 20 pounds of onions, 12 pounds of pickles, and 30 pounds of lettuce. Oh, that thing looks delicious. It was also done for charity. Uh, pieces of that big juicy burger were sold for 99 cents and the proceeds went to the Alameda County Food Bank. So tip to the hat to these good folk from, let's see, let's give them some credit. It was Brett Enright of Juicy's along with Nick Norada of Oviation Food Services. So yes, and I'm going to beat you one day. That is my goal in life. My only, the only bucket I have on my list is to make the world's largest hamburger and it will be done here in America. The only time when I feel patriotic. <laughs> I wonder how the guys are for epic meal time like that. Not too happy, they're Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. Oh, well, bring it this bring show down here. I'll, bring it on. Oh, you can come here. <laughs> I, I, I like big food, but I, I like it to be done here in America. We're the fat, slovenly country, Nick. We should have the I juicy know, food. Canadians do give us a run for our money, but what, where's the fun without some competition, right? There if there wasn't go. a rival, then That's true. Not, there, people wouldn't be making 700 pound hamburgers. Because no know. people would have stopped at 500. 595. American Canadians need to push it past the quarter ton boundary. Yeah, I think the Australians gave up at like 300 pounds. You know, I <laughs> by the time I They're get to this, though, this game. it's probably going to be have to be like a 3,000 pound ha hamburger or something by the time I get my chance to make this big hamburger. But I can't wait. It'll be good. Um, we'll announce it when we finally do that, if we're still on the air. Who knows? I got to start saving my pennies. That's a lot of hamburger meat. Yeah, that's a big project. Yeah. Uh, how much is it? A pound? A few, a few dollars? Uh, <laughs> I'd use the cheap stuff for that. I'll wait until my next tax return. All right. Until next week, it's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good one. That was a quick wrap up. these 130 plus reasons to move to Keene.